Was the latest installment in the Ring franchise any good? Let's talk about that. Sadako 2019 is about a doctor named Mayu Akikawa and her wannabe social media star brother, the fantastic Kazuma. They're your typical brother-sister characters with Kazuma being extremely cringe and embarrassing and Mayu being passionate about her work, but nothing else. Especially not passionate for women who might have a crush on her and go beyond innocent territory and start acting all stalkery. Their lives would change and, spoilers, come to an end in no time. After crossing paths with a little girl with no name, the girl was abused by her mother in an attempt to essentially recreate the events that created Sadako. She wanted her daughter to be Sadako, and quietly like Kakuma did to Sadako. The mother prepares to kill the girl, but unfortunately for her, Sadako's close by and allows the girl to escape as she's killing the mom. The girl would then become infected with the curse, causing a woman to kill herself, strange things to happen like a sandbox sinkhole and even having the ability to use the force. She's essentially Nagi 2.0. It's like the filmmakers took that character from the Spiral timeline and remade her but better for this. The story would then see Kazuma wind up getting cursed while attempting to get views. And Mayu, although the seven days were up and Kazuma should have been dead, heads off on a mission to save him. I like the characters in this. As mentioned already, the girl here is sort of like a Nagi 2.0, and having also read the spin-off manga before watching, I was all the more invested in her character. Mayu is a pretty good protagonist, not on the levels of Ryuko or Mai, more like whatever her name was from Sadako 3D2, um, not Akane, the sister of Takanori, uh, Fuko. That was her name, but she was better than her actually. I also thought they did a great job with Kazuma. I didn't care for him all that much and found him to be pretty stupid, but he felt like a real wannabe social media influencer. He was desperate for views and downright embarrassing at times. He was interesting to say the least. The movie also brought back Masumi, played by the same actress. And though I knew Masumi would be in this, the reveal of the stalker lady being Masumi was great and made me like her even more since she was someone we watched in the first two Ring movies. I didn't like that her death was off screen though. I thought that was pretty dumb. Something that I loved about this movie is, although it wasn't spot on, they tried their best to give fans the originals a treat here and there. Like the cursed videotape in one instance having the same screeching sound, as well as featuring similar imagery to the original. They also did a scene afterwards where Sadako slowly climbed out of the TV. And although this didn't look amazing, and I thought her nails <laughs> really looked like shit, this was still really cool. Yes, there have been screen crawling scenes in most of these movies, but this one was way more similar to the original, and pretty fun to watch. And finally, the last thing I noticed was their attempt to Ryuji Mayu. At the end, when you think everything's okay, Sadako appears. We see her eye, and then the movie fades to black, and Mayu screaming and getting scared to death. I wasn't as much of a fan of this moment though, mainly because they showed way too much of Sadako's face and it looked kinda stupid. No offense to the actress, it just looked too normal. It wasn't scary and it just felt goofy. Just show us the eye, like they did in Sadako vs Keiko. Overall, I had a fun time with this, and I'd rate it an 8 out of 10, ranking it just below Sadako vs Keiko and just above Sadako 3D. If you've seen this movie, up to your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you like me and want to support what I do, become a channel member or patron over on Patreon. Both grand exclusive perks like early access to new videos. Thank you for watching.